It's one word Wednesday, baby. Girl. <laughs> it's probably my last. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. You sound sick. Yeah, we'll talk about it. I am Ozone. Ozone? Mm -hmm. You got a hole in you? <laughs> And this, I think I got, that got fixed, actually, once people stopped using hairspray. People are unfamiliar even what an, what an ozone is. Greenhouse gas. Hello, Frank. And this here is Frank looking When you fine. say gas, I think of Frank. He's a gassy guy. <laughs> um, How you guys doing? Yeah. Do I sound sick? Yeah. Was there no Dr. Seuss Friday last week when we told ourselves that that will be our first week of not missing a podcast? Yeah. I got so sick. It's their fault. Because I believe right before that, we had a podcast saying we the need devil. prayers. Oh. So it looks like. You prayed on my downfall. No. <laughs> I don't think they prayed at all. Oh. Yep. The devil was at us. And this time in the form of a little two-year-old child. You, <laughs> aren't, aren't they always? All those movies. Yeah. You know, the, you know, the, yeah, the devil hides behind innocence. Right? Yes. Because then you welcome him in so yeah, it's like, oh, Easily. I, yeah, no, when really you see anything innocent, you say, get away from me, innocence. Yeah. You might be the devil in disguise. Yeah. Yeah. So I started working out of school, if you haven't already heard. And uh, first full weekend by Friday, I was I was a wreck. I was, I was so sick. And I know when it was from and I know the kid that did it. Oh, to my me. gosh. Don't you dare say who. I'm not going to I'm not going to blame them on live camera, but you know who you are. I don't think they know how to work a computer These yet. little kids are watching no. you on YouTube? So this one kid was sick and their parent kept sending them back. But this kid, there's a little girl, is very fond of me. You're already lim you're already reducing the people it could be. <laughs> it's a little it may girl. have been a little boy as well. And it may not have been. And the parents kept sending this girl back even though she was sick. And so the, it was like Thursday maybe, maybe Wednesday. And she was sick again. Like, But I mean, people work in hospitals. With a lot of sick people. I know. And yeah. I wasn't careful enough because this is what happened. My heart got the best of me. I know it was my fault. Aww. So she was sick on Tuesday. We, no, sorry. She, she was sick, -ish, sick on Tuesday. Said, hey, parent, she's sick. Sent her home. Wednesday, she wasn't there. Thursday, she comes back. She gets sick again. Call the parent. Come pick her up. Uh, we'll get her in an hour or so. The other kids are playing. She gets kicked to a table by herself. You sicko. <laughs> while, while we're all playing. It's like, here, you can have some clay, but you can't play with the other kids. Oh my kids. gosh, the clay can get contaminated. And so I'm like, yeah, listen, like I made all the other kids stay away from gross old old girl. I felt bad. I went over and played. And well, you could have. You just needed to put on your hazmat suit. I know. And I was I was thinking I was bigger. I was better. I was stronger. I was healthier. And uh, I played and um, got really sick. And it wasn't retro. It was only retrospectively when we're in there on uh, Tuesday. Monday was a holiday. Shout out laborers. Um, but then on Tuesday, and I'm still there. It's like my first day of like I can be on two feet. And I walk in, uh, uh, and I heard someone cough. A cough that was all too familiar because oh it's the gosh. cough I've been coughing for the past four days. And that little snot-nosed brat. Don't say that. No, I'm just kidding. I don't hold it against her. People get sick. I mean, you you come to Earth with no, you know, idea what you're going to encounter. Yeah. They're just little aliens that now have to adapt their systems to Earth. Yeah. Yeah. But shouldn't I know as the older alien? Well. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. If I get sick again, then I can start blaming myself. <laughs> well, sorry, certainly it wasn't a Dr. Seuss Friday, but we're also running out of Dr. Seuss books. So make, maybe we're making, you know, uh, supply and demand. Maybe we're dropping the supply a bit to make the demand more. No, it was unintentional. And it'll be this week. It'll be this week, unless something else happens. What is with you? Um, today's the UN's International Day of Clean Air for Blue Skies. Ah, I wish we had clean air in that classroom. Yeah. Clean air for Blue Skies. Mm-hmm. I like that. So like green, go more green. Yeah. Well, you know, the UN has that. Remember, we talked about it in previous um, <clears throat> podcasts, an initiative that they have a lot of goals they want to meet by 2030. Smogless. 2030. Yeah. Um, 
And so this is a specific day, September 7th, 2022, but it's, it's, it's every September 7th, but it's 2022. And, um, the theme this year is the air we share. The air we share. Mm-hmm. Because you might have, um, like pollution, like we talked about, we had a pollution podcast. The pollution podcast was, um, not the only okay. The pollution co- podcast was number 328 and we're only at 335. Okay. So you don't have to look back far, so far to see the pollution podcast. But you might have pollution where you are. Um, and then it's like, well, that's their problem. Like, uh, uh, it, it, what's Mi- Jackson right now? I think Mississippi is having a, a polluted water problem. Oof. But we're like, oh, well, we live in Pennsylvania. So. Sorry, Jackson. Just joking. Sorry, Miss Jackson. Just joking. We, we're upset about it. But what I'm saying, it doesn't affect us. But air pollution has no borders. So Ooh. the pollution that is created, just um, yeah. uh, one of the big polluters is actually the, the dust from Africa that, yeah. that floats around um, willy-nilly. But fine particle pollution in the air is, it causes many, many... Um, Your lungs were not built to be breathing in that stuff. Mm-mm. Ailments? Problems? Are you thinking still? I was sad about it. <laughs> oh, well, oh you're, were you covering your mouth to not breathe in the particles? <laughs> to get a little filter um, between so My you? name's Ozone. Ozone? Ozone. Because I'm Irish. Ozone. Ozone. For oh. our own ozone. <laughs> you know, Tommy but, Ozone. Yeah. Um, ozone is... So oxygen is two, right? H2O. So it's two, two, two oxygen, two... What are you saying? Like, you know how it's like... That's water. Two oxygens make water. Yeah, but I'm saying like ozone. Oxygen is O. Ozone is three oxygens. Yeah, and then some nitrogen in there. Yeah, I think it's more nitrogen than oxygen. In the ozone. Oh well, in the in the atmosphere of like what we breathe. Well, yeah, I'm not saying that. I'm saying uh, saying that. I'm saying I'm saying what ozone is. People think oh, some people think ozone's a bad word. Some people think ozone's a good word. You said, "Is there a hole in the ozone?" I and thought ozone was just a layer of the atmosphere. It's gas. That like, yeah, but it's isn't it like a layer, layer of it's a layer the, of gas in the atmosphere? In it's the like atmosphere. a high up there. Well, it can and it can fly right into your face. The ozone? Yeah, I don't think it can. Okay, so no, this is what I think. <laughs> Get your research away. Okay, I think the ozone is this gassy layer around the Earth far away Mm -hmm. and what it does its benefit if you will is the same way you covered your mouth yeah to not get the particles in your mouth it does that for like the sun's radiation and stuff so we can destroy it and then things are worse for us it's like if you destroy it the mask you're wearing during covid ozone is i think it's just three so it's like if you're wearing a mask and you start smoking cigarettes and it's like you're burning a hole through your mask it's like Whoa, that's going to defeat the purpose of a mask. Actually, ultraviolet light causes ozone, um, as does lightning. <clears throat> lightning creates ozone. I don't know. Ozone does protect. Um, I've never heard of these words before. Ozone is one of the things you smell when it rains. So we're having an extremely rainy day. So to- the ozone's what smells so good? Today. It's a mix of the of the water, the ozone, plant material. I don't know. I don't know if I believe any of this. It is. It's You know what that smell is called? You're, you're like turning the ozone into like a... Like, like I, I've seen it. I've touched it. You can, you, you can smell it. It's, it could be toxic. To, toxic ozone? Yeah, like um, too much. You get like, it would burn your throat. The no-go zone? It would burn your throat. It it does. It, it's cleaning the air, really. It's a filter. Um, yeah, it's a filter. But yeah. Uh, the smell. What is that smell? The mixture that you smell when you, um, you know, lightning causes ozone and um, ultraviolet rays. And then you have, so you have this and you have the water and then you have. Um, probably other gases, but there's this, the, the actual name. People go, oh, I can smell rain or it's going to rain. I can smell it. It's called petrichor. That sounds like a music, like a genre. Petrichor? What's your, what's your favorite kind of music? Ah, it's, it's like a subgenre. It's called petrichor. I hope I'm, I hope I'm uh, pronouncing it right. Looks like it's me. And it was just named not so long ago. I mean, when I say not so long ago, maybe it was relative, right? But I mean, it's, it's modern science i think they were australian but yeah so try to um you named know, what they 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 keep they they gave it a name gave it a name i thought it was like giving an award for like the greatest smells no here's this thing where it's uh this, this uh controversy a not a controversy 
when something is like aliens are real, that's called you're putting on your tinfoil hat. Oh, you you you're really into conspiracy. these conspiracy theories. Here's conspiracy theory about you know, remember when you're younger and like some people hated it, some people loved it, the smell of gasoline. Yeah. When was the last time you smelled gasoline at the, gas stations? The other day. Did you? Yeah. As much as you used to? I don't remember sniffing it that ever more than now. <laughs> Why? What's the theory? I, like The theory is that like gases, they ran out and they were lying right. to us or something. What ran out is money. And so we used to pump wildly. Did, did she fill in the tank? It was spilling out. We were smelling it. Yeah, now things, we're like, I, we have $4. We're like. I think, uh, I think uh, also uh, car, uh, cars improved of like, I think legally oh, they yeah. had to like. Stop letting your fumes out. Yeah, even if you look at the, um, when you're filling, um, when you put the, first of all, the nozzles, the nozzles are, um, upgraded to, so that fumes do not escape when, um, sometimes they're a pain in the neck. You ever try to like, you you know what I'm saying? Like they have, um. Oh, yeah. The extra seal and everything. Yeah, and yeah, the pain. extra bit of security and the rubber and the plunger and the. Right. And then. Some people don't even know what we're talking about. If you live in Oregon or New Jersey. They don't have cars. No. They don't pump their own gas. Well, the gas pumpers know what we're talking about. Gas pumpers of a uh, Oregon and New Jersey. <laughs> gas pumpers. You know what we're talking gas about. Gas pumpers union. Um, okay, so I don't know about that. Eh, it's fine. You have a lot. You, you you said a lot of things about the ozone that I didn't know. Yeah. Will I fact check it? There's also yeah. man-made ozone, like ionizers. Man-made ozone. Yeah. There's man-made ozone. You can get it for like air. I can buy a can of ozone. Um, I think you can put it on your face, but I'm not really sure about I'm that. Put ozone on my face? Yes. Yes. You were, you were on a gag website. No, no, I'm not. No, I'm just remembering that. And and I do know that there's like ionizers, you know, and these these air treatment mm, gadgets. What's that perfume that you have on? Oh, it's just the ozone. You should be so lucky. Yeah, and maybe. Hey, a, listen. God, on. Goddess of the skies. Oh. Well, so everyone knows what you can do to, to help. The, but America's pretty good. Are they? Yeah. America's are they? pretty good. Uh, Asia's really bad. They are. Uh, I think Northern Europe. Um, it's bad? Air pollution. They're not addressing what's, what's it. What's Northern Europe? I thought that was like Sweden and stuff. That's all it said on the website is Northern Europe. I can't remember. Maybe like, maybe that's, no, maybe, no Eastern Europe I would think is worse. No. I would have remembered if, oh, maybe, what, is that Bosnia and stuff? That's Russia. Yeah. It's Eastern Europe. It's polluters. I've never even heard of like Northern Europe. Yeah. There's like Western Europe, that re- Eastern Europe. That reminds me of um, what was it? South of Philadelphia. South of Philly steaks. <laughs> no, when um, Doctor Oz said, uh, Dr. "I'm from Oz. South of Philadelphia." Yeah, Doctor Oz said, "I'm from South of Philadelphia," and then Fetterman showed a map and showed that Jersey is South of Philadelphia. Right. And did someone say, uh, "I live right west of Philadelphia"? <laughs> and it's like. Well, some people call it California, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah, but like you really can go northeast or west of Philadelphia. And be in a completely different place? Uh no. Be in a suburb of Philadelphia. But there is no south of Philadelphia suburb. Oh yeah. Yeah. South like beyond northeast or north. You're in the river. Beyond n- northeast Philly, because that's north of yeah. north is a suburb right west is you, know, right. you get like chester and stuff yeah um well east you can't go east either oh can you not okay no, it's east and south because oh well, right because the whole river well, okay it's shaped like that and so right it's uh the natural barrier okay on this side like it's hugging up against like that so he picked the wrong he picked the wrong direction <clears throat> well, yeah, well I, mean, I think a lot of um a lot of that is South Jersey as well. I think a lot of South Jersey people would come to his aid and beck and call about that mm-hmm. argument because they align with Philadelphia culture so much more. Right, because it is their it is their city because they wouldn't be going up to New York. Yeah. And they don't and have their own. A lot of Jersey culture is like either nor- North Jersey or the shore. Right. And so when you are butted up closer to Center City, than a lot of places right. in Philadelphia, right. like being in the Northeast and right. stuff, they would argue. But any Philadelphian would will say, unless you live listen, the, with I'm the a green Philadelphian signs. who li- who lives I don't know, so lives Western maybe Northwestern. Um, you live in Ohio, <laughs> but 
I'm not going to give it to him. I'll give it to someone else. Oh, 100%. If you're 100%. from Camden, you're from Cherry yeah. Hill, great, you live south of Philly. The reason he can't say that is because he's trying to be governor of Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. So telling me about a different state is making no sense. Yes. Two, twofold. I will agree with... If anyone doesn't know, there is a governor race or senator race. Governor. Governor. No, 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 you're right. Senator. senator. I'm sorry. Governor is, it, is um, Shapiro and... Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. There's a senator race in Pennsylvania... Senator. ...that is becoming uh, nationally recognized because of its... One, uh, Pennsylvania has always been a swing state, so mm-hmm. eyes are on it. Two, just for the high profileness of... He's a celebrity. Of doctor, Everyone knows Dr. Mehmet Oz and then um, Everyday Man Fetterman. And why I'm not giving him to it is I do get mad with Philadelphians sometimes of how much they ostracize. Right. The, like one, you could go to the same school, go shop at the same supermarket, walk the walk the same uh, trail to to wherever, and if one person lives on one side of the street and another person lives right. on the other, you're not from Philadelphia. Yeah. That's like a common thing. It's Philadelphia annoying. theme. Yeah. And my always my argument, which. Um, or my devil's advocacy to these people, which goes against uh, Dr. Oz, is it's about culture. Right. It's where, d- what determines you're from a place is, do you share the culture? Like, right. Yeah, if you get someone in, you know, an hour away, that's like, oh, Philadelphia is my city. It's like, you grew up in a completely different environment. Yeah. You don't talk the same. You don't have the, the same day-to-day hobbies. You, you didn't grow you're up You're not aware culture. of the struggles. You're not aware of, of, of what we're looking for. And so there's some people that are in South Jersey that grew up. That do, yeah. That grew up right next to South. Probably all, they played on the same baseball team. Of course. South, like the accent, everything. They're indistinguishable. And so why I'm not giving it to Dr. Oz is because not only, even if you did live in Pennsylvania. Right. But you don't. So now you're, you're trying to argue right. for Jersey and you've never lived the culture. Right. You don't even know, you don't know Pennsylvania culture. No. At all. No. And I think that's what the Fetterman, why he was punching that point is he is like definite. Obviously, they have both of their stances, but on a social politics level, mm-hmm. which that's what politics has turned into, he is saying, I forget about politics. He does not understand Pennsylvania. I do. Right. I, I live the culture. He right. Did not. Yeah. Is his a just a move? You know, a power move to, to be a senator, or yeah. do you really know and care and are interested and will remain interested, yeah. or are you going to still keep because I guess low that's popping? Like, like we can always talk about how the country split like fifty fifty, and yeah. we can get into the problems of that on the left and the right. But I think that's one of the reasons why it turned social. It's like you know what to expect with either side. They say this, the exact same thing, right? So then you start looking at the character, and it's like saying, okay, well. I believe this, you believe that, we know that. You're going to get 50% of the votes, you're going to get 50% of the votes. Now the goal is, who can say, you may not agree with all, all of what I'm saying, but can you at least agree I'm a better guy? Right. I don't know. I don't know why I keep knocking the glass. I'm sorry. That's fine. Guys, let's stop talking politics. Because this is a religious podcast, and I don't think Jesus would want us to. Ah, he probably would want us to talk about everything. It's one word Wednesday, baby. Girl. <laughs> It's probably my last. Stop it. It's one word Wednesday, a beautiful day where we just talk about a word, a word from the dictionary. You know it. We've done it a hundred times. We have a playlist. A playlist. It's called One Word Wednesday. It's called One Word Wednesday. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's that simple. I just watched a new Elvis movie. It was great. What? So kind we're just going to pick a word. Um, I think you've already picked a word. I have. Let's hear it. Witness. Witness. I witnessed an Elvis movie. Let me correct my sentence. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? I know someone's listening to me right now. Can I get a witness for my marriage? You need a witness. You do. Yeah. You do. You need witnesses. Um, Interesting. I wonder why. So why, why is the officiant not enough? <sighs> um, Because the witness needs to say someone who's not involved. Even though the witness is usually involved, yeah, it's like you need someone who says, "I have no, sh- I have no, um, something in this fight." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have no dog in this fight. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. So I think maybe it, it, do you need two witnesses? It's just like I never really investigated it, but you know, I have the maid of honor and the best man. That that's like that's like a ceremony. But even yeah. if you go somewhere, yeah, you know what? I do believe it legally. In, you in, need, even in Vegas, you need two witnesses. So, but isn't that funny? So the officiant 
and the two witnesses makes three. And it's very biblical because a lot of the Bible entries are when they talk about witnesses, especially if you're accusing somebody of something. Yeah. You can't just say, uh, yeah, he's, he robbed me. They very much say, you got to bring like two more people yeah. um, before we believe you. Yeah. So that's probably the origin. That's probably the origin. Um, all right. So let's just talk about it while we still have time. Um, yeah. Witness, obviously, we have just were talking about coveting. So we're going down the commandment list. The commandment list. So, so the commandment I'm bringing up, obviously, is thou shalt not bear fault witness on your neighbor. Right. Which which for Catholics would be the eighth commandment. But for everyone else, it's the ninth commandment. Yes. Because we split covet into wait, two. Wait, wait, go check out our old podcast. Number 333 is that um, podcast. Um, the other day... Uh, someone was filling out or wanted to fill out a job application for a position <coughs> at a Christian organization. And besides the resume and the interest letter and everything, they wanted a witness testimony. And that is something that some spiritual organizations want from you. So besides I went to school here and this is my experience, they want to hear your witness testimony. Your witness testimony is your story of your Bear and witness. Your it's it's your journey. Yeah, you're t- you're um you're admitting that you chose Jesus. I've seen I've heard it from um, athletes. Even it's not good enough that you were born a Christian. You have to say, yeah, I was born a Christian, but when I was twelve, oh. I really started to think so, or fourteen, or twenty seven, or after okay. I got out of the army. So it's a witness testimony. It's your own witness testimony, and it's and it's your um. You know, your story about how you came to make the choice. Okay. I'm not against it. I'm not against it either. Um, so. I mean, I'm against it if it, in the sense of if it turns something exclusive, I'm not against it if it says, be true to yourself. Are you really, do you really yeah. want to be a part of. Uh, yeah. Like if they're just interested, especially yeah. if that's the, you know, what they want for their business. Um, I, I, t- I just talked about the um, needing two. Or to tango. Two, two witnesses, I think two or three witnesses in the Bible many, many times. It's saying, um, this because, you know, especially the Old Testament, it's like setting up rules for life and civilization. Yeah. Society. And uh, so, but, so when Jesus comes, uh, if you look at John, the book of John, and in, well, first you have um, John the Baptist coming as a witness to the light yes the light is coming it's not me but he's coming behind me but if you get to john 8 this is where jesus is telling the pharisees that i am the light right yeah the pharisees is like that's funny because it's you're only you were saying that yeah so you were witnessing for yourself and that's not valid and then of course jesus says well it is valid i'm the only one that needs to be the witness yeah, I don't need witnesses to you know agree with me, but he, but then he ends up making witnesses, all the apostles, and yeah, and that's who continues the story, right? Is all the witnesses, right? It's who bore witness, yeah, and then you know you do that throughout your life, um, and then you become a Jehovah's Witness, <laughs> and I think that's one of the nice things, right, about the Bible. I've brought this up before, but never under the the umbrella term of witness is some people might be like, why do we read the same story over and over again Mm -hmm. with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the gospels of why can't we just use one? Like we're, we're rereading the the miracles or rereading, you know, the, the birth and the death. And I think a part of it is that is, is the witnesses testimony. Oh yeah, you're right. When, when you have a crime and you gather witnesses, you separate them in rooms and say, tell me the story, tell me the story, tell me the story. The more people that say the same story, right. the stronger the accuracy builds, right. the stronger the rapport to the true story builds. Right. And I think that's part of why we read the Gospels the way we do. It's Everyone might say something different, but within all of these witnesses' testimonies, you're getting the truth. Yeah. When that's what is that not what the Bible is, but the truth. It is. It really is. And um, there's a new thing, you know, you'll see popping up on um, mental health sites and stuff and it it talks about just being a witness as well to people in their pain grief confusion because if you if you can't we always talk about what can i do like and and sometimes we say all you can do is pray yeah but something you can also do is like witness their pain meaning i can't fix it but i can not sit with you yeah you know what that is um in in um in what's it called capital punishment 
the final um when you're put to death you know i forget what it's called it's like the day that you're put to death yeah um there's witnesses there yeah and there's some witnesses there that want to witness your death because they they hate you but there are um spiritual witnesses there that are there for the main cause of i'm going to witness this with you so you're not alone for you, so you're not alone yeah uh, i had a professor who lost both of his sons at a young age tragically and um he was talking about like sort of in that way of people everyone came to the house obviously and like he wanted everyone to leave they were all giving him the same i'm so sorry yada yada he didn't want to hear it and he said the one person that meant the most to him didn't say a word everyone else left and just stayed in a, in, in a chair didn't say do you need anything didn't right. say anything just sat there like head down like all he was doing was his presence was there right and this happened you know maybe 10 years ago and the professor's still talking about he could not remember the flowers right he, he, but he remembered this person just being there right and, and there, there's a certain like sense of and you know there's a, a where we are we are a, a a people that need yeah like the, this unspoken like and you can find holes in a lot of things. It's so interesting. People that, say you know, that people very do. much interests me. Yeah. It very. I, I don't know if I spoke about this before in the podcast. It interests me to no end how humans thrive on being witnessed. And I'm not saying like people. Oh, people want attention, whatever. But think of a small child which you work with, right? Yeah. Look what I did. Look what I did. Yeah. Like you know, immediately you want to share. And um, and um, you know, I think of the movie, the Tom Hanks movie with the, the Castaway. I think yeah. it's called. You know. That where he where he, he created an inanimate object as a witness. Yeah. You know, the volleyball. Because it's like it's really important to be witnessed. Yeah. Yeah. And not even to be interacted with. No. Uh just think of how a house feels alone rather than someone's in it. Right. Not even someone you're interacting with. It's like once it's nobody there, yeah. You get a feeling inside. It's like Well yeah, uh, they they always say if these walls could talk because yeah. the, the the house itself has witnessed so much passing activity in the Bible. They actually talk about inanimate object witnesses, which are, they talk about stone, <coughs> like the, they'll do something right at this area and they'll go, and this stone will serve as a witness that this happened here. Yeah. Or they'll put up like a pillar or they'll say that um, this pillar serves as a witness. Um, yeah. Um, we could talk about this all day. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that much. But um, I think... I think we want to talk about two things okay. to finish up. <coughs> I want to talk about good witness and then we'll finish up with bearing false witness. Right. Which the Bible does warrant. Warn, that, that's a commandment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So good witness. I mean, we should start with bad witness since it is in the Bible. Yeah. Um, thou shall not bear fault witness upon Why my name. Why are you name. saying fault? Fault. I have a nasal thing. False. False, <laughs> false witness. You should not bear fault wit false witness upon your neighbor right and um on a very earthly term that that means just as in a courtroom you know like i said why you need to it's he did uh, or what's it called you want you want him to pay or something and right. it's like he's being accused of something it's like uh yeah he did steal this or you see it on a very small scale of siblings look at the cookie right. jar you stole the cookie from the cookie jar right your sister gets reprimanded right and it's did you saw her steal a cookie Mm -hmm. Well, I have a yeah. cookie in your mouth. And right. and it's saying don't bear false witness because I think to go to the good reason to witness is I think we have such a, a um, the purpose of a witness is very important. Yeah. As we interact and live, live in society with other people, we are meant to speak the truth. Right. Right. And it, it puts the obviously the um not power the importance of a witness is so high yeah. in, in society why do we need it in marriages why do we need it in, in judicial systems yeah. why do we need it is because the importance of witnesses is someone to to give us the truth right it is to speak unbiasedly and to ruin the sanctity of that witness ship in a lie is almost worse than being the like being a I, I think if there's two people one stole from a cookie jar and one bore false witness on who stole from the cookie jar that person's worse i think okay because stealing is your is your 
hurting yourself, you're hurting whoever you stole from. But to bear false witness is to hurt your neighbor. Right. And we talked about that a little bit in the Covet podcast, where why is Covet worse than jealousy? Right. Why, why is Covet worse than envy? And it's because you're hurting someone else in your actions. Right. And, and the same thing with, with bearing false witness. It's hurting your neighbor when you know the truth. Right. When you're stealing, you might know you're stealing, you might know you're doing something bad, but you pay the repercussions. When you're bearing false witness. Yeah, it's like you're a villain because yeah. you have power. Yeah. Because, you know, if, whenever something happens, they're like, will you be my witness? Yeah. You know, you you want, you know. So being a witness is a position of power. And then to use the power for, for bad is literally a villain. Yeah. <laughs> and and I think, um, you know, just to finish up, one of the reasons why witness is like a superpower mm-hmm. is the ultimate witness, the ultimate, you know, judger, or not not, not that they judge, but that can see over everything, is God. God is, as God is my witness. Because people say that. Omnipresent. I see everything. Nothing gets past me. Right. When you go to heaven, he's seen everything you've done. Right. And so on a very small scale, we as humans can't see everything. But as a witness, you're, you're stepped, you're put into a earthly position where I have seen right. this. Right. And, and so just as, as you know, God can't speak to the courtroom, but you can. And right. God saw it all on, in heaven. I saw this situation on an earth. And to lie on that is to go ex- do exactly the opposite of what someone, right. the person who sees everything would do. And what you wouldn't want done. And what you wouldn't want to you, done. To you. But that's a fun topic. I would, would like to talk to it more, but I need to go put Vicks on my feet and put my socks back on. <laughs> Peace.